Hey everybody, so in this video I am going to show you how I make these hooded towels with embroidery and sewing. You will need your embroidery machine, you will need a sewing machine, you will need a full size or standard bath towel and a hand towel. You don't have to use embroidery to embellish. If you don't have an embroidery machine, you can certainly just sew them, but that's what I'm using to create these. And let's get started. Okay, so I'm still gathering everything that I'm gonna need because I forgot that I am gonna need my iron. But um, this design requires a couple of different steps. While it is a embroidery design for the, you know, the decorative portion, it also is going to need to be sewn. So I'm going to show you what I do for all of these steps. Okay. Now we're starting with the hand towel. You, let me start over the supplies you're going to need. You're going to need a hand towel and a regular towel. Now, the regular towel that I have is a, I want to say, well, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's a 27 by 52 inch towel, just a regular standard bath towel. And the hand towel that I'm going to be using is a 16 by 26 inch hand towel. Now, I do not cut my hand towel in half, and I'll show you why. Um, basically, at the end when everything is put together, you will not have that applique part brushing against the kid's head, okay? So I'm using a 10 by six hoop or a six by 10 hoop, however you term it, and just making sure everything is in there. I am gonna be using paper tearaway stabilizer, and I will be needing some heat and bond light, and your different pieces of fabric because this is an applique design. So normally I would have had all of this stuff already prepped, but I kind of decided to turn my camera on now. So I'm gonna fold this towel in half so I can find the halfway point. And then remember on your hoop, you've got your markers on your hoops that mark halfway and then they'll meet up in the center if you had like drawn an, Im an imaginary line, sorry. So I'm gonna take where it's folded, line it right there at that little nodule so that it is lined up in the center. And then I'm gonna pin this part down. And I guess I should have done a complete supply list at the beginning. Um, I'll try to, I'll put a, a complete supply list in the description box so you'll know everything that I'm using. But I'm gonna get some water soluble stabilizer to put over the towel and that will keep the needle from dragging. I just need to see how much I'm going to use. I'll just cut it right about there. I can find my scissors. And I do continue to use um, a plastic bag to put my water soluble stabilizer in just so that it doesn't dry out. And so I'm done with that for now. And from this point, I will pin this, the water soluble stabilizer on top of the towel, okay? And I just fill along the edge to see where the border of the embroidery frame is because I know that this particular design will not go all the way from end to end. It's pretty much in the center. So I'm going to get this all pinned down and I'm hoping I don't take too long on this video because there are a lot of steps on it but if you if you're familiar with doing applique it's not too difficult. Okay let's see here. 
Okay, so I've got this pinned down. I'm going to prep my pieces of fabric so that I won't have to come back and prep them step by step. And I'm just going to set the hoop over on the machine. Get that out of the way. Okay, sorry about that. So I know that I've got some blue piece, a, a blue flower that I want to use. I want a pink flower and a yellow flower. And this fabric is very thin, so I am going to double it. Going to double it, and I'm going to double it basically so that it's not, you know, showing the towel through. Because if you lay, if you can tell with it being right here on the table, you can see, I can see the black grid lines that, um, Maybe you can't see it, but it's, it's very thin. So I'm going to double the fabric, okay? Now, I'm just going to iron it out. And in between the fabric, I'm going to put the heat and bond light. And that will do two things. That will keep the fabric from separating. And it will keep the fabric from fraying, okay? Now, even if I did not double it if I was just going to use a thicker piece of fabric that was um, thick enough to not show through I would still use heat and bond light on the back of the fabric to keep it from fraying because the last thing you want is for somebody's child to have this cute towel and they throw it in the washer and it starts fraying okay so that's that Now I've got my heat and bond light and it is the light. The light is with the purple wrapper. And if you've watched any of my patch videos, you'll remember I use the red wrapper with the uh, patches, but I don't run the red, the, the ultra hole through my embroidery machine. Um, I don't know if it really will, but I'm just worried that something like that will gum the machine up and I'll be paying for repairs that are not necessary so let's go through and we're gonna put this heat and bond on the backs on the insides actually I'm saying on the backs but on the insides of all of these pieces of fabric and I know that I'm measuring off more fabric than I'm actually need But um, I've not stitched this particular design out before. I needed to find a um, Afro unicorn design. So I went to Etsy and this is for the horns. So I'm gonna fold this this way. I'll redo this. But I went to Etsy and I found a unicorn afro okay so i haven't peeled the paper off yet because it's still hot and if i pull it off too soon it'll be gummy and it's it's not gonna work as effectively as it would had i just let it go ahead and cool off so we're gonna give it some time to cool off now these are for the flowers and i know i don't need that much fabric for these flowers so see here I'm only going to need about a square and these are actually just pieces of fabric that I had from other projects that I just cut into different squares so that they'd be a little bit neater and they come in handy definitely want to make sure you're not having any extra lint in between your layers of fabric I've got a lint there's the lint brush if you have a lint brush go ahead and run that lint brush through it and keep from having lint or anything in between your layers I'm gonna just apply a little bit of heat a little bit of pressure let it cool off and I'll just move to the next. Oh, this is actually two separate pieces. And that's fine. Now, I cut this in half, but I'm going to save this piece 
because this has the purple stamp on it and I'll know that it is heat and bond light and not the ultra hold so I'll just sit that over there and I'll put that away in a little bit and I'm actually just trying to pick my voice up a little bit because I think I was talking a little too low just a few moments ago and I don't want to talk too low for y'all these all should be cooled off I'm going to peel this make sure you get all the paper sometimes that paper will try to stay then I'm going to fold it back over and I'm going to iron and it doesn't take much for this to do what it what it needs to do now I'm going to pull this back and fold that over there I'm going to iron that and I'm just going to sit this over here with the yellow and let's see here this is the one that I'm going to use for the horn and let's see here I'm going to fold that over and iron that in place and the blue should be cool by now because it doesn't take long you know you just you want to let it cool off for a few seconds I'm going to line that up there and iron that together and then I'm going to get the black piece which is actually going to be the biggest piece because it's going to be the afro ears and I'm actually just guessing my sizes of fabric based on what the dimensions on the computer program said that the um, design is so you fold that iron that in place now I did get all the threads out that I'm going to be using for this in advance so I'm not hunting for which color threads I'm going to use I'm basically going to put the gold on top of the ivory because that's going to be the horn I'm going to use the blue on blue yellow on yellow pink on pink black on black okay and then I think there is a spot for a little bit of green and we'll cross that bridge when we get to it so now we're going to head over to the machine okay I am using the brother Enovis VE2200 this is the machine that I'm using and it does have a max hoop size of 8 by 12 if you have the upgrade kit and I do not have the upgrade kit so my max hoop size is going to be 7 by 12 okay now I already have my design loaded I'm going to put my machine on the hoop and this one has the it slides in it slides in and then it locks down okay and the machine does know when it's not locked or if there's no hoop in place and it will not give you a green light okay so now I'm gonna thread my machine because I had to thread it sitting on the table Wow I'm going to start off using black just to tack all the pieces down because I did preview this design and I saw that all the pieces are put in place before the satin stitches go in and the satin stitches are all that really matter when it comes to the color because you do not want your satin stitches to be in the wrong color. That was that automatic threader that I love. And now we're gonna go ahead and start stitching the first step, which is the horn placement line. And I actually cut out 
a lot more fabric than I needed, but that's fine because it all covers up under there as far as the, um, the pieces that are bonded together. They're going to be directly on top of that horn. So I'm going to just hold to it lightly and let it do the tack down stitch. Now, I'm not going to take you to the table with me, but before I go to the next step, which is going to be a flower, I've got to take this off the hoop and trim around it so that all this extra fabric is out of the way. Okay, so I've got this all trimmed up and I'm going to put it back on the hoop so that it can run the next placement and tack down stitch. And this design is a little more time consuming than I would care for but it's okay because there is a little girl who truly likes unicorns and she has afro puffs so <laughs> we'll we'll make it happen right and so that is for the center flower And now I've got the hot pink. I guess this is a hot pink fuchsia. I'm not sure what color that is, but I'm gonna use that as the color for the center flower. And I'm just making sure that all of the placement lines are covered up with the fabric. And I'll just hold that in place a little bit. And sometimes I feel like I'm just making it with these appliques when I try to spare my fabric because I will save this fabric and use it for the next project when I need it. Okay, so once again, I'm going to take this back to the table and I'm going to trim all of these lines, I mean, trim all of this extra fabric off and I'll be back. Alrighty, I'm back and I'll just put this in here as quick as I can so we can get to the next step. Clamp that down and make sure there is no extra towel in the way. And I do use a thread stand here. It's a weighted thread stand and I keep it away so that it kind of pulls that way on the machine but away from the hand wheel on the side of the machine you don't want it to get caught up in that hand wheel because you'll have thread all up in there and the repair costs I don't even know what the repair costs would be because I'm trying to not have that problem happen so now we're going to put down the fabric for the yellow flower Okay, and once again, I'm gonna take this off the machine, trim it, and we'll come back for the next step. Alrighty, we're gonna run the next step and see how this is starting to look. This placement line will be for the blue flower. And I'm just checking while I'm waiting to make sure I don't have any thread or lint that's going to end up getting stitched down in there because you don't want any unnecessary junk. Put that there. Make sure it's where the heat and bond light is at. Okay. Because I could actually feel that this section right here didn't have any on it. So I just wanted to make sure. So I moved the fabric down a little bit further. Okay. 
Alrighty, so I'm gonna take this off and we'll go to the next step afterwards. Well, what I mean is I'm gonna take this off, I'm gonna trim it like I did the other flowers and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so the next step is the Afro Puffs. Um, it's gonna do the outline for one side and you'll see why I cut the fabric a little bigger. I'm gonna make sure that you know the heat and bond light is in there and I'm just gonna let it do the tack down stitch now I certainly am not a hand model but hey <laughs> And so I can tell right here that the thread is starting to shred a little bit. So I'm gonna actually go through and I'm gonna re-thread. I'm gonna clip this here. I always clip, I'm sorry. I always clip up high so that you have a tail there don't pull it out backwards pull it down through so that you don't have thread backing into your tension disc make sure your pressure foot is up and then just pull it out because you don't want this here bird's nest to get caught up in your tension disc and then your machine will be sitting there at the shop hoping to be repaired within two weeks because it's waiting behind 10 other people who did the same thing and their machines are in the shop too. So I'm gonna re-thread, I'm gonna trim this and I'll be back. I mean this, I didn't realize the camera wasn't pointing at it. Okay, so I have the machine re-threaded and I'm gonna go to where I am at step 11, which will be the uh, placement line for the second Afro puff. So we'll get that stitched down and hopefully that thread re-threading was sufficient to stop that bird nesting. One thing I have found when your machine starts shredding at the needle, it could be your thread is too cheap. Um, your machine, your needle might not like it. You may need to change your needle. Sometimes we don't realize with these um, machines that you've used a needle over and over again and it starts to daw or get bent a little bit or whatnot. So sometimes a needle change is necessary in between your jobs. I try to start off all of my jobs with a new needle, a fresh bobbin, and my thread i've always used coats embroidery thread i've never had too much of a problem with it i think with with all threads you could probably have one that was just from a bad batch but overall i've not had any problems with it i know a lot of people like um i don't know madeira and gunnard or whatever but this is the embroidery thread i started with because i bought my first embroidery machine at walmart and I bought the Coats Embroidery Thread at Walmart. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off and I'm going to take y'all to the table with me this time. So you can see what I mean by just taking the hoop off of the machine. But I am not taking the actual towel off of the hoop. <laughs> so let's go to the table and trim this one up. Alrighty, so we're over here. I'm still using my little orange um, Fiskars curved embroidery scissors. They work, so you know they say if it's not broke, don't fix it. Now this is a little tricky because I stitched this in black thread on top of black fabric and I've got to go through and trim around all of it. It shouldn't be too bad, 
but um, one thing I do, I always try to lift it so I can see behind it just a little bit to pull it up just a little. And that sometimes helps me get a little bit closer to the stitch line without actually cutting the stitch line. Now this is one design that I hope turns out really cute because it's taking a little bit more time than I like. But if it's cute, it's well worth it. Okay, so for this part, I'm just gonna cut that so I could get this big piece out of the way. And now I've gotta go through and trim a little bit closer on these. And let's see here. It almost looks like just a bunch of flowers clustered together. <laughs> I don't know. I hope that you can see what I'm doing, but I'm literally just trimming around it with the goal of not cutting through the line, but getting as close to that thread line as I possibly can. Okay. So this is where I'm at so far. And I do believe I could get a little bit closer so I'm gonna try and get a little bit closer. Oh, I'm just showing how I'm trimming this. This is my nine-year-old coming in. The one who tells me, you gotta do some videos and some sewing so that you could be a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, we need to make some money. Well, it's not about the money, baby. Well, yeah. He watches about... gamers on YouTube and how many millions of subscribers they have yeah. let's see here so you just got to get as close as possible and if the satin stitch is thick enough it will be okay if you don't get completely up on that thread line because the thread's gonna the satin stitch is gonna cover it and i'm just checking over here because i just feel like i could got that a little bit closer so now it's time for the details to be stitched in with those satin stitches and we'll go back to the machine hmm, I hope you're able to see all of that but let's see here that's what I've got so far you've got as much trimmed as possible I'm not gonna worry about getting that all close up in there because I do think at least I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that the satin stitch will be wide enough to cover that up. So we are back at the machine. I dropped my scissors and we're going to do the first set of satin stitches which are the afro puffs. I'm going to get my lint brush and run over this a little bit because that gets on my nerves to see all the lint on there. Just gonna unlock that and pull it out. Okay, so we'll run those satin stitches and you'll see how this starts looking. Now the design itself, I got it from a shop on Etsy and I will have to look and see what is the name of the shop. But the font that I'm using, I got that from Designs by Juju, of course, because that is where I get most of my fonts from. And the Afro Unicorn came from a shop on Etsy called Toolland. And they have some really cute applique designs on there. And I am not an affiliate or paid sponsor for any of these designers. They probably won't know me from a, what do they call it? A, a can of dishwashing liquid or something? I don't know. But um, anyways, I just, I have some designers that I found their websites and I really do like their designs. And if it's a design I like, I will tell you. And I think that 
whoever does these tool land she does a night or I'm, I'm assuming it's a she but the satin stitch looks really nice and thick so I do not think that there'll be a problem with the other ones now the different color changes are the downfall of having a single needle machine when when it comes to different colors but for this one we are going to do all of those color changes because we have to <laughs> That is how the design is supposed to look and we, we need it to look right. We can't run it all with just one color thread. So this is actually going to stitch all of the Afro puffs, both sides, and then a little bit of, I guess, the hair down here. And I will just let that continue stitching and we'll check back in. Alrighty, so it is finished with stitching around the afro puffs and the little hairs going down the front. I'm going to change my thread because the next step will be the satin stitch going around the horn. So I say that this is a gold thread, but the actual color is wheat and it is by coats, of course. And let's see here. I loop that through. Now this machine, I do have the pressure foot up. Sorry, I had to step back and look because I was thinking like, why isn't it going through the loop? But I think it's because of the angle in which I'm standing because I don't want to stand in front of the camera. But the way this machine is, is designed, it honestly will not let you thread the machine if the pressure foot is down because then this little case i don't know if you can see that but there's a little cover right here that covers over and you can't get the thread onto that loop if the pressure foot is down so that is one thing i like about this particular machine because all the machines don't have it but now that's going to stitch over the unicorn horn sorry i keep bumping the camera and what is it saying? Check and re-thread the upper thread. Okay, it does that sometimes. So let's check it and re-thread it. I guess it wasn't feeling right. clear that alert so I hit close over there and now I'm gonna press the automatic threader and let's see if it'll do something now so does it look good I'm honestly just stopping it right now because it may be the glare but I wanted to make sure I wasn't seeing white thread coming through because that would have been an indicator that something was going on with the tension so it's all good we'll keep on stitching And I'll just let that keep on stitching and we'll check back again. Alrighty, so this step is all done and the next step is gonna be to do the little green, I guess they're leaves on the sides of the flowers. So I'm gonna change this thread.
and we will let those things stitch. They shouldn't take too long. Um, they're just those little pieces of flower on the sides of the flower, pieces of leaves on the sides of the flowers. So I'm looking ahead at the design and I do believe that the two flowers on the sides will have one stitch color. My screen is, yeah, it's showing it now. And so I'll show you what I mean. With this machine, it shows you a picture of the whole design and then it shows you what stitch is next. So now the next stitch is the two, the outline for the two flowers on the end, but it's just one color. And I didn't realize that, but that's fine because this is the first time that I've used this design and it's actually stitching out pretty good. Um, I never would tell somebody to just go ahead and stitch a design on something without doing a test stitch of the product first. But this is the only thing that I've run into that was odd to me, but it's fine. So since this is just one color and on my towel, I already have two different color uh, flowers down because I have the, bl the blue on one side and I have the yellow on this side. I'm going to just use a completely different color thread and I think that thread color is going to be silver. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to clip that up there. Pull that out. Okay, and remember when I said that the, this machine will not let you thread it if the pressure foot is down? I'm gonna lower the pressure foot. See if I can show that. Okay, I'm gonna lower the pressure foot. So the pressure foot is down and it thinks it's ready to go, but there's no thread in it. So it's, we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna go through the motions as if I was going to thread it. And you can't, you can't get it in there. It's not going to, it's not going to work for you. Okay. Um, this here little door keeps that thread from going anywhere. So lift that up and it opens up and you can thread the machine. Okay. So I'll go ahead and actually restart and when you're threading these machines you do hear some like little pops going on when the threads going through the correct tension disc and I never really knew to listen for that until I was having tension disc problems and the guy at the repair shop told me to hold my thread back at a certain angle when I'm threading it and to listen for those little pops that indicate that yeah the thread is going through the tension disc correctly. So 
so I hope that this doesn't throw the design off too much as far as the look of it I guess I could have trimmed it in gold but the horn is in gold so I'll just do silver and I'll know next time to do the, the flowers on each side the same color if I want the flowers to actually match match the thread I should say hmm Lord, I hope she likes this. But they are nice, thick satin stitches, so I am thankful for that. They have some good digitizing, for my purposes anyways. There are some creators that do thin work as far as the stitching is concerned. And they don't like the big satin stitches, but for me, the satin stitches do exactly what I needed to do. Cover up the places I could not get close enough. Putting the design on the hood is the most time consuming part. The part of actually stitching the hood together and putting it onto the towel to make it a hooded towel, that is, that is a fairly quick process. Okay, so now I'm gonna change this thread and put the, uh, I'm gonna use a hot pink. Let's take this one out. Sorry for having my arms all in your way. We'll stitch that center flower and after that there are just a couple more details um, putting the name in and actually the name is going to go in last but putting the little ears inside the afro puffs and then the little dots inside the flowers It is getting late and I've got to work in the morning so I will probably finish stitching all of this out and then the actual hooded part I'm going to record in the morning and put all the videos together all the pieces together I should say and upload it so if the hooded part I sound like I have a little bit more energy it's going to be because I've finally gone to sleep But I've got to figure out how to do that tagging in my video to make the um, timestamps so that people could go to the part that they want to actually see. I mean, I know most YouTubers want people to watch their whole videos, but I'm a realist and I know I don't watch anybody's whole video unless it's like 
something that I have never seen before. So I don't expect people to watch the whole thing. Um, I do. I am going to figure out how to do timestamps so that people can see the different sections of where I do what. It might not go up immediately in the video, but it'll. I'll get it done. Let's see here. I gotta find my white thread. Not find my white thread. It's actually over on my other machine. Because that should be the next step, should be the ears, and I'll do the ears in white. Okay, so I'm going to change the thread and we're going to do those ears, which are going to be in white. Let's take the old thread out. And just looking ahead on design on the design I see that the black will be for the dots inside the flowers and for the eyelashes and then I'm gonna do her name in the hot pink keep bumping the camera and now these sizes because of the size of the hand towels being folded in half work good for kids towels um, when I get ready to do my son's towel because he is a tall kid he's like four foot ten and he is nine so I'm gonna do an adult size towel for him this time because I did one for him years ago that the hood is actually too small for his head now so look out for the adult version um, I do it slightly different because I do actually use two hand towels to accommodate a bigger adult size head or a bigger kid's head. 
and I use a bath sheet instead of the standard size towel. Okay, one more thread change after this. In this black, like I said, is gonna be for the dots inside the flowers and for the eyelashes. Oh, my dog is outside the door and she scared the mess out of me. Oh, I had to get her. Sorry about that. Sometimes I forget that I have a dog because she doesn't come in here, but she'll stand outside of the door and she'll just be laying there sometimes quiet and then she'll get to shaking and she's got a collar on and it scares the mess out of me. Okay. Now we're gonna stitch those little dots in the eyelashes. And then we'll have one more color change after this and I'm going to take a break, call it a night, and we'll do the towel in the next half of the video. Where I will hopefully have more energy. Oh, that's different. The way they have the little flowers that's cute I like that I'm telling you I've not stitched this out before and I absolutely love this design that's awesome because the centers of the flower is she I, I'm just assuming it's a she it may be a he they made it look like little starbursts inside the centers. I'll show you when the design finishes finishes up. Alrighty, time for those eyelashes. And when it gets ready, when we get ready to stitch out the name, I am going to take those pins out from the bottom because I don't want to take a chance at the needle bumping it. At least that center blue pin, just to be sure. Because at this point in the stitch out, Nothing should truly be shifting. I am not going to say that it can't shift, but it shouldn't. It's been a while since I've made hooded towels. Goodness. I mean like four years since I've made one of these. But this design is really cute. Sorry, I'm just kind of rambling to myself. Now I've got to go through all my peaker designs or what they call them. They call them peakers or top, well, some of them call them toppers, depending on who does the design. But um, see what other cute little designs I could find, because I know I didn't have, you know, this design because she, it, she wanted a Afro unicorn. And that's fairly new. I don't I don't think they were doing those four or five years ago. But I do have a bunch of designs that I think will look really cute. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to take that thread out, re-thread it with the pink, and this is the last thread change for this design. Thank goodness, because this was a rather long design. And I keep saying it's been a rather long design. It's not that bad. Let me take that pin out. I don't think that this pin will be a factor. And where did it go? Yeah, there it goes. It's like, honey, just take the thing out the machine and stop doing all of this nonsense. And I, I went through all of that to get this pen out and I may not have needed to. Probably didn't have to. Okay, let's go. Okay, so this last step is just going to be stitching her name out. So I'm going to just let it go ahead and stitch and I'll check back with you in a little while. Actually, I'm going to take a break. Who had to get her. Sorry about that. Sometimes I forget that I have a dog because she doesn't come in here, but she'll stand outside of the door and she'll just be laying there sometimes quiet and then she'll get to shaking and she's got a collar on and it scares the mess out of me. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to stitch those little dots in the eyelashes. And then we'll have one more color change after this. And I'm going to take a break, call it a night, and we'll do the towel in the next half of the video. Where I will hopefully have more energy. Oh, that's different. The way they have the little flowers, that's cute. I like that. I'm telling you, I've not stitched this out before and I absolutely love this design. That's awesome. Because the centers of the flower is she, I, I'm just assuming it's a she, it may be a he, they made it look like little starbursts inside the centers. I'll show you when the design finishes, finishes up. Alrighty, time for those eyelashes. And when it gets ready, when we get ready to stitch out the name, I am going to take those pins out from the bottom because I don't want to take a chance at the needle bumping it. At least that center blue pin, just to be sure. Because at this point in the stitch out, Nothing should truly be shifting. I am not going to say that it can't shift, but it shouldn't. I 
It's been a while since I've made hooded towels. Goodness. I mean like four years since I've made one of these. But this design is really cute. Sorry, I'm just kind of rambling to myself. Now I've got to go through all my peeker designs or what they call them. They call them peekers or top. Well, some of them call them toppers, depending on who does the design. But um, see what other cute little designs I could find. Because I know I didn't have, you know, this design because she, it, she wanted a afro unicorn and that's fairly new i don't i don't think they were doing those four or five years ago but i do have a bunch of designs that i think will look really cute take that thread out re-thread it with the pink and this is the last thread change for this design thank goodness because this was a rather long design and I keep saying it's been a rather long design it's not that bad let me take that pin out I don't think that this pin will be a factor and where did it go yeah there it goes it's like honey just take the thing out the machine and stop doing all of this nonsense And I, I went through all of that to get this pen out and I may not have needed to. Probably didn't have to. Okay, let's go. Okay, so this last step is just going to be stitching her name out. So I'm going to just let it go ahead and stitch and I'll check back with you in a little while. Actually, I'm going to take a break. Alrighty, so she is all done. I'm going to Take her off of the hoop. And I think that looks pretty. What do you think? So now I'm going to take this off the hoop, get it cleaned up a little bit, and we'll start turning this into the hood of the towel for the hooded towel. Okay, so I'm going to take these pins out. And please, whenever you're working with pins, be sure to get all of them out. The last thing you want to do is send something to someone that has straight pins in it. Oh, that could be a problem. Now, with these towels, if you scrape too hard and you're not careful, you could end up lifting up some of the those little loops that create the towel. So I just try to carefully pick away at the bigger pieces 
and then because it's water soluble I will get a q-tip with a little bit of warm water dipped down it and just dab the edges of the water soluble stabilizer that I can see and the rest will wash off whenever it's washed I truly don't worry too much about the towels okay so that looks good now I'm going to take it out of the hoop and remember this design was done in a 6 by 10 hoop however if you only have a 5 by 7 hoop you could do it in two parts okay or you could just do a smaller version okay you can very well get this part in reposition the hoop and put the name in afterwards okay so don't limit yourself and think that because i'm using a six by ten hoop for this that you can't do this because it might take you a, an additional step or you may have to just do the design a little smaller but it can be done okay so this is a tearaway stabilizer and on towels i always use tearaway stabilizer okay when I first started doing embroidery, all I used to ever hear or read in uh, different groups was, if you wear it, don't tear it. So if you didn't, didn't wear it, you could tear it. And I don't know if that rule applies to everything because I do not embroider everything, but um, it certainly does apply to towels. <laughs> And some people ask like their stabilizer underneath the stitches, will that stabilizer start shredding or showing or whatever? No, um, I have towels in my kitchen and bathroom that I've embroidered and I've never, at least I've never noticed any tearaway stabilizer like in the wash or anything like that. So I've never had a problem with it. So I don't feel that that is a problem or an issue that you would have to be concerned about. But I'm just gonna go through and take all of this off. To be a little more careful, I'm glad that number one, this is a gift for a friend of mine and number two is hidden underneath the Afro puff. And in videos, I tend to try to rush so that I'm not taking so long doing things. But in reality, if you just take your time and work through these, it will come out really nice, okay? So just take your time with them. Okay, we are almost there. No, oh, somebody's cracking up laughing downstairs. All righty. We are almost done cleaning this up. And I'm sorry that I tend to talk low when I'm just kind of like thinking out loud, but that's what I do. Okay. And let's see here, get rid of all this trash because that's what this is now. And if you're ready to vacuum your floor, I'm sure you could just shake it all out. Let's see here. So now I'm not gonna worry about this here, the strings and stuff. I will take this sticker out of here. I guess that's like the quality check sticker that was in there. I will take that out. But um, I am gonna fold this towel in half now. And I'm gonna line the edges up, edge to edge. 
as even as possible, okay? And that is because I'm gonna stitch this. I'm just gonna do a straight stitch going all the way across, okay? With the closest matching thread that I could find. I do have some pink thread loaded in the machine and I'm gonna go over to my SC425. I'm using it in sewing mode and I'm just gonna sew a straight line going down. I am gonna go through and pin it. Sorry, that was a little bit of stabilizer that was left. I am gonna go through and pin it so that it doesn't come out of place and I don't have to worry about fighting with it. And we will be almost to the finish line on this hooded towel. Let's see here, just go through and pin it. But you know how to pin things, so I will meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, this is the Brother SE425. And I think, yeah, it's called the Enthusiast. But um, it is a sewing slash embroidery combo. But now I'm just using it as a sewing machine. But this is the very first uh, embroidery machine that I bought. And I bought it at Walmart. It actually came with the, I'm sorry it's so dusty, but it has the embroidery attachment that um, you just kind of interchange it with the sewing arm. So that is that. I just keep it back here. And you know, in case of an emergency, it's like in case of an emergency, break glass and go get that four by four hoop out, okay? But anyways, I'm gonna stitch this towel. I'm trying to get the camera focused so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. I'm one of those people that sew barefoot. So that's what I have to do. Now, I am gonna start off just be before the, uh, just past the hump, okay? Because this hump is gonna end up getting cut off. So I'm gonna start stitching here. I will do a back stitch first and then bring it all the way forward. And it's just a straight stitch, okay? The setting that I am using is uh, it's a 3.5 straight stitch. And on this machine, it is stitch number three. Okay, so I'm gonna push this so that it will start doing the back stitch for me. And it didn't do very well. So let me cut that and see what's going on here. Sometimes, when there's oh well you know what the foot wasn't in there good that makes a difference i'm not sure where along the line the foot came loose but i'm gonna lift it um, i'm not sure if you can see okay there's like a little screw right here that screw is very loose so i'm gonna take the pressure foot put it back into the little slot there where it belongs and let's see if it's in there good. Uh, where is my screwdriver at? Bop, 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 bop. This is why you should always keep your craft room as neat as possible because you can find things. And I honestly feel like when my room's clean or neater, it helps me think clearer. So anyways, I just loosened that up a little bit. I'm gonna push it up and hold it to make sure it stays in place. And then I'm just gonna turn it and now it's in there, okay? And this, I'm not sure which machine this screwdriver came with, but it works. So now I'm gonna do my stitching. <laughs> And let's see here. Sometimes you do have to help your piece by pulling it a little bit. And now I'm just gonna go forward and I'm gonna try to stay on track with the same line. I am not a perfect stitcher, so 
it may not come out perfectly aligned, but it should be close. And I'll just keep sewing. It is storming, so I'm hoping that I can get this at least all finished and recorded before the power goes out because this area, the power is known for going out on us. And I'm just gonna back stitch on that. Oops, something else fell here. So now we've got your end stitch together. And I do like to go through and make sure both sides are actually stitched together throughout the entire length, okay? Because you don't want to have any puckering. Now, an option you can have, or the op an option you have, you can do, you could get some bias tape and do a trim along the edge of that. And that would look really cute. You know, maybe something contrasting or put a ruffle or something on there. That would probably work. But I'm gonna go uh, back to the table for just a minute. I'm gonna clip this access off and no, I'm not. I'm gonna go ahead and do the hood while I'm at the machine. So I'm gonna fold this here. And I'm gonna still line everything up. I have this inside out. I have this inside out. So the design is on the inside and this is going to be your inner fold. And I'm going to pin that together and then I'll just stitch that while I'm here. Okay. And you'll, you'll get the idea of what the hood is going to be looking like what the hood will look like. And I like to do one end, then the opposite end, and then meet everything up in the middle just to be sure that everything is going to line up okay. Even though I'm going to cut this bottom part off to decrease the bulk, I still want to make sure everything is lined up. And that rain is coming. Okay, that should be good. So I'm gonna bring it back under here. Of course, I'm gonna do another back stitch. And of course, it's too much bulk for this to handle for some reason. So what I did was I lifted the pressure foot up over that hump just to help it out and go backwards. And now I'm going forward. And I'm trying to keep these straight, but go as close to the edge as possible while maintaining, you know, that line of keeping both of them together. going to take that needle out because it is very close. Now I'm going to go back stitch and I'm going to cut it and I'll take the other needles out, straight pins out. They are not needles and that looks pretty good but just for my peace of mind I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do another stitch down. Okay. And I am going to start with a back stitch. And that just kind of locks it in place. You don't have to do as much of a back stitch as I do, but I like to make sure that that back stitch is in there and then just go forward. And 
and I'm going to stop just before that hump and I'm going to do a back stitch. Okay, so I'm not even going to go to the cutting table now. I'm just going to sit right here and let me see. I'm going to get my fabric scissors if I could figure out what I did with them. Y'all, I really need to take a day and just clean up my craft room because this is awful. Um, it doubles as my craft room slash home office and all of that. And um, when my nieces come, I make all of this stuff disappear to the best of my ability so that it doubles, it triples as my guest room. <laughs> I guess it can only double so much and then it's tripling. Okay, so this here, I'm going to clip that off and I'm just going to go straight across and I'm not going to try and be a superwoman and trim both at the same time. I'm just going to do one side at a time. And I'm just going to trim straight across so that that is eliminated. And it's not going to matter because all that loose end is not going to be seen. And if it makes you feel more secure as far as your clipping is concerned, you can go like this. Okay. You don't have to double it, even though it just makes it faster. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to just clip. Okay, so now that's clipped across and it's still stitched on the ends for the most part. And we've, we've got some more sewing to do. Okay, so we're not done. Now I'm going to show you how I line this up. Okay, so I have the standard size towel. And remember, this is the 27 by 52 inch towel. You can use whatever size towel you want. And now I have what will be the hood. I'm going to sit that over there. What I want to make sure I do is I want to make sure I line the towel up with the tag towards the bottom of what will be the bottom. Now the hood part is going to get attached starting at center. Now I have the towel folded. Uh oh. I have the towel folded. Let's see here. I'm going to adjust this camera so it's a little better vision. Okay, I had to adjust the table, uh, the tripod a little bit. And I'm always like, oh my goodness, I don't want people to see how messy my craft room is sometimes. But I figure y'all don't really care about what my craft room looks like. You want to you wanna see how I make these crafts that I'm making. So I am going to make sure it's folded in half, okay? The part that's folded in the middle, that's gonna be your center point to line up that hood, okay? So remember the tag is at the bottom end down there and then up here is the top center and make sure you have the insides facing each other you're going to get your towel and with the towel this is the inside of it this is the part with your design that you want to show eventually you're going to take the inside let me rephrase that. You're going to put both right sides facing each other. That's I think that's a simpler way to say it. And you're going to take this seam that you created when you stitched the hood together and you're going to line it up with the back of the towel in the center point. OK, so that's the center point. I'm going to pin that together as soon as I grab my pin cushion. I'm going to pin that together and I'm going to pin it together just below. Is that how I want to do it? Okay. I had a brain freeze for a minute. You're going to pin the center there and I am going to go just below that band that traces the edges because we're going to use that in a minute to hide the raw edges. 
So I'm going to pin that there because that's the center point. And then I'm just going to go through and make sure you have both pieces because that point is that part is not sewed together all the way. If it, you know, makes you feel better, you can always serge it or sew it together so that it doesn't separate while you're pinning it. But you're going to be sewing this and in reality, it's going to be stitched twice. So it's going to be on there. Okay. And somebody is watching wrestling downstairs. And let's see here. Just pin it all the way until you run out of hood. And I'm just trying to make sure I keep that just below this here band. Now I have that pinned down. I can actually unfold this now. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Because in my mind, I keep thinking that this is going to not stitch right, but it does. Okay. I was sleepy when I started this project. And honestly, here I am 24 hours later just finishing in this project because I had to work today. Um, I had some other items that I had to get done today so that they're in the mail tomorrow. And so now here I am finishing this one. So, okay, I'm going to stitch a straight stitch on the hood part going straight across. Okay. And then when I get that stitched, I'm going to take it, take the needles out and then I'm going to flip this and that band is going to be stitched down to create kind of like a French seam or a French hem to hide the raw edges. Okay. So I'm going to put this pin back in place and I am going to go over to the sewing machine. Okay. I started stitching this and then I realized I didn't bring the camera with me, but I'm just doing a straight stitch all the way across and just trying to make sure that I do capture everything. Because even though it is pinned with towel, it could be funny. Okay, I'm at the end, so I'm going to do a back stitch. Okay, and let's see if I got all the pieces in there. Take these pins out. Okay, so you see it is stitched going across here. That's all stitched. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip it. And always look on the opposite side before you go to proceed. Just to be sure it did actually all get closed up and you don't have any holes. Okay, so... I'm going to take this now. I'm going to take the band from the big part of the towel, fold it over the raw edges, okay? And just sew down that edge, okay, to hold it in place. And then that way you've got a nice neat seam on the inside. Those raw edges will be covered, okay? Okay, so let's stitch this final step. This is the raw edge in here. This is from the big towel. It's folded over it. 
I am going to put it a little farther down and then I'm going to do a back stitch. Okay. Just a little bit of a back stitch. And then I'm going to come forward and because I'm not pinning this, I'm just going to try to be a little slower and a little more careful so that I make sure that this actually does flap over correctly and it's closing up the raw edges from the hood. And if this is something that you're going to be selling, this will be the perfect place to tuck your little tag in unless you want to open up the seams on one of the sides and put a tag in there. And I choose to put the hood on this side because it's the smaller part of the piece. Let's see here. Now this machine is not the best for heavy duty stuff. And I do have a Singer Heavy Duty, but this is the machine that I use. Um, I'm teaching my son how to sew as well, and it has speed control. So for a nine-year-old going slow, he could press that foot down as hard as he wants to. It's not going to go any faster than that, but you can speed it up. My sewing room simply is not big enough to have both of my sewing machines out. But alrighty, that is it as far as the sewing is concerned. I will go through and trim up some of those loose threads and um, get that situated. And we'll look at the final results in just a second. Alrighty, so I clipped all the loose threads out and I'm going to turn the hood in right side out. Try to get as much lint off of these pieces as you possibly can because I don't care if it's a paid piece, a gift or whatever. The last thing you want to do is send something to somebody that's got a bunch of lint on it. Especially when they know you do your work out of your home. Um, I think that looks pretty good. I am going to show you how I fold it. And I do try to make sure the hood is tucked. And there is a way to make that hood a little more rounded. Um, everybody doesn't like that pointed top. But for the kids and the fact that this is a unicorn, I thought that would be cute with the pointed hood. When I do the adult hooded towel, I will show you how I make the hood a little more curved without all that point at the top okay i should have moved these out of the way okay so i'm just going to fold the bottom half of the towel basically into three parts let's see can i get this any bigger spaced out more i'm going to fold this into three parts and it'll stop there and there is something on that towel really okay i don't know what that is but i'm gonna have to start this over golly what is that okay well no i'm not gonna start this over what i am gonna have to do is use another pink towel that is the one thing i don't like when um Gosh, I wish I would have noticed that. That's the one thing I don't like when I buy stuff like a lot of towels at one time and I'm not really looking at all of the colors as far as the quality and is everything nice and intact. But I do have some more pink towels. And so I'm not going to have you all go through the whole process of me redoing this piece. But um, for the sake of quality, I am going to redo this here piece and um, I'm going to get it restitched. Okay, because 
I can't. That's that's just something you may not notice it on camera, but there's a blue spot right there and I don't know where it's from. And I just bought these towels, but um, I can't use it. So I've got some more pink towels and I'm going to use this one. Let's take that quality sticker off. I guess that quality sticker doesn't mean a whole lot, <laughs> but it's probably something that happened at the store and I just didn't pay attention. So I'm going to redo this and I will meet you all at the very end. Okay, so I've gotten a new towel stitched onto that so that we don't have any blue spots through it. I'm going to fold this towel into three parts so that it meets up at the hood there. And then I'm going to take each side and roll. After I try to straighten them out a little bit, I'm going to roll them so that they meet. And this is not the neatest roll, but to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, bring them in like that. And then just kind of work your hood over it. And it's going to be like you're cupping the, the, the hood in the back. You're going to kind of cup it over, if that makes sense. And then if you would like get some ribbon or bow or whatever and tie around it to make it nice and pretty and you'll have your hooded towels so this is hers and this is the one that i did uh for her brother earlier and i'm gonna get these together and they'll be able to take these home with them or i don't know if Grandma's shipping them. I'm not sure how they're going to get them. I don't know if they're still over there at her house or not. But anyways, they are done. And I'm going to tuck that in the back as well. And I will get some, some uh, ribbon and tie around them so that you have the hooded towels. Okay. Alrighty. Well, I do thank you for joining me. I know this has been a loopy video. Um, thanks for bearing with me. I hope that you will continue to watch, like, share, subscribe. And that is my nine-year-old waving his fingers in the screen. Y'all, y'all catch him in a video or two later on, but, um, until next time, keep on stitching.